mechanism of hypoxemia. Uh, then hypoxia and COVID-19, what's happened uh, in uh, COVID-19, why do they develop this hypoxia? And a little bit about this highland hypoxia, one of the most important thing uh, which you uh, discussed during these days and one of the most important killer in patients uh, with COVID-19. And a little bit about the oximetry, the principle behind that. And then a uh, little bit about the hypoxia induced inflammations, why this uh, hypoxia is dangerous. And the, finally, uh, some principles about the management, but I'm not going to details about the management. So uh, as you all know, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it's a coronavirus type of some sort of coronavirus. Now, you know, there are many, many uh, mutations also going on, different versions are there. So it's as uh, all the other viruses, it gain entry into the uh, body and it gets into the cells and they, the virus use the uh, normal uh, cell functions to replicate and finally produce uh, a significant number of viruses and uh, give rise to the all the clinical manifestations. So the, as you know, during the incubation period, so this is what is happening. And especially, you know, these are the uh, spike proteins. The, the spike proteins they use to uh, gain entry into the cells and the main the portal of entry is ACE2 receptors as you are aware. And as you know, the most of the vaccines now target against these spikes proteins. So the main uh, important uh, function, so the aim of this vaccine is to uh, prevent this addition, so the entry into the cells. So, so this is the life cycle. So when the, this virus enter into the body, uh, it go through this cycle and this uh, AC2 receptors are common in many, many tissues, including the respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, upper respiratory tract, uh, GIT, even CNS, there are receptors. So then virus can uh, get entry into the many cells of the many organs in the body. So once this uh, uh, virus enter into the uh, cells via AC2 receptors, it's most of the time, the many patients, it's mainly a, uh, upper respiratory infections, usually involving the upper respiratory tract uh, and producing some sort of a mild symptoms. But the problem is, uh, so it might invade the type 2 cells of the pulmonary uh, alveolar epithelial cells, that is, it's contained the AC2 receptors as well, and it can gain entry into the lungs and at this stage it's produced a significant inflammatory response as you aware but we are called the cytokine storm uh, the cytokine storm associated with production of various uh, kind of inflammatory mediators including il1 and il6 so il6 is one of the major culprit as you know the level of il6 will be increased in significant amount in some patients which develop the severe disease that's why the uh, we are going behind this tocilizumab now the general public also know about this tocilizumab that is anti il6 that is one of the target to uh, the neutralize the action of il6 our aim is to reduce the exaggerated inflammatory response. So the inflammatory part is going on. There are a lot of cells involvement. And finally, this host defense mechanism itself induce some sort of alveolar damage and tissue damage. And that is one arm. The other arm is direct viral replications and the viral replications leading to direct cell damage. And this might con uh, continue and that also lead it to tissue damage. The finally uh, develop, uh, if it is lung, it's in all the ARDS and some sort of diffuse alveolar damage and ending as hypoxia in patients with COVID-19. Can you see this mouse point? Rajit, are you here? Yes, can see, can see. Oh, okay, right, thank you. Right, so when this happened in the body, as you know, so the viral the, in the initial phase, pre-symptomatic phase or the incubation period, the viral, the load, the genome, the viral uh, particles number gradually increase and around day four, five, six, it's become maximum and then it's gradually reduced. So in the initial phase, even in the pre-symptomatic periods, as you know, uh, especially within uh, 48 hours just before the development of clinical symptoms also, they can shed the virus. That means they are infectious at this stage as well. And gradually, when the immunity develops, the virus, the number of viruses are reducing, 
and most of them end up with mild disease. But the problem is some of these patients, this inflammatory response start working, especially during the second week of this illness and finally leading to the severe illness and the critical uh, illness. So that is mainly inflammatory response which lead into the significant amount of especially development of hypoxia and rest of the complications associated with COVID-19. So this initially the viral response is leading to mild response, mild clinical symptoms and but finally this host inflammatory response leading to the significant uh, tissue damage as well as significant morbidity or even mortality in patients with COVID-19. There are a lot of mechanisms before going into these mechanisms. Uh, uh, so what is the clinical manifestations because of all these things? Most have mild disease. That means no evidence of pneumonia. It's only the upper respiratory involvement or sometimes they might be asymptomatic, asymptomatic patients. Or if they have mild disease, it's only involvement of the upper respiratory tract. And moderate disease, they have evidence of pneumonia, but it's not a significant pneumonia. And the severe disease, uh, is this, they have the complications of going beyond pneumonia and development of ARDS. And critical disease, you may um, uh, the heard about the, this uh, aspect as well. This is the most dangerous thing which develop uh, mortality in most patients. Critical disease end up with shock multi-organ involvement or even development of significant thrombosis. So before going into what is happening in uh, patients with COVID-19, why do they develop this hypoxia or hypoxemia? We are using these both terms interchangeably, but sometimes might not get the proper the idea about these uh, two terms. What is hypoxia? What is hypoxemia? So what is important in this context? So hypoxemia is a reduction of oxygen level or simply the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Usually we take as a 60 as the cutoff, but it is a little bit changing, but it's simply it's reduction of oxygen tension in the blood. Uh, the important thing is hypoxia, it is reduced level of oxygen tension at the tissue level. So this is the most important thing because we know that the primary, uh, the purpose of supplying this oxygen, the respiratory tract and the circulatory system, all these things to provide oxygen to the tissues. The tissues are the cells are the factories, the local factories, we have to give the supply. So uh, if we cannot use this oxygen or the level of oxygen is reduced at the tissue level, that is uh, called hypoxia. Um, what is the connection between hypoxemia and hypoxia? So hypoxia reduction in blood oxygen level can lead into hypoxia, obviously, at tissue level, but that is not always. Uh, for example, uh, if the blood level is reduced, for example, in patients with cyanotic heart diseases, cyanotic heart disease, you know, if we do the blood gas or the saturations, sometimes maybe saturation uh, 70 <coughs> or um, even uh, less than that, but they, they are maintaining the oxygen uh, um, supply to the tissue level and the, the, they don't have hypoxia in patients with most of the time compensated congenital heart disease, especially cyanotic heart disease. So to that instance, blood oxygen level is reduced. That means hypoxia, hypoxemia is there, but no tissue hypoxia. The other way, sometimes the blood oxygen level would be normal, but this oxygen might not be able to use the tissue level like cyanide poisoning or the tissue perfusion issues. Oxygen might not reach the uh, peripheral tissue. So that is uh, instance which there is no hypoxemia, but hypoxia can happen. So, so I, I think now you are clear about this. So COVID-19 patients, so it's most of the time, this hypoxemia reduction in blood oxygen level leads to uh, development of the all the issues. So why, uh, before going into what is happening in COVID-19, just to recap your uh, second year physiology, what are the mechanisms of hypoxemia? Why? the blood oxygen level is reduced in patients or normal persons. Uh, uh, there are five reasons. The first thing is 
low inspired oxygen if the amount of oxygen we can we are having to inspire the inspiratory oxygen level is reduced then end up with hypoxemia but this is not usually important clinical practice that is usually uh, important like in uh, high altitudes or when we are climbing a, a very high mountain because of this reduction of gas tension in the atmosphere in high altitude but otherwise it's clinically not important in uh, our usual day to day setup and the other mechanism is hypoventilation. So you know the respiratory uh, system is a, the pump. Uh, so it's involved, important to get uh, air into the body, into the lungs. So if there is a problem with this main ventilatory mechanisms, it may involve the nervous system, it may involve the muscles of the respiration, or even the thoracic cavity, or uh, anything can cause in the reduction of ventilation, can reduce the amount of air which enter into the body or the lungs. So that simply uh, reduce the amount of oxygen available in the blood. And the diffusion, this is again the very simple thing. You know, this all these gas exchange happen with a simple diffusion uh, through the alveolar capillary membrane. As you know, it's a very, very delicate membrane. It's less than uh, uh, 0.3 nanometer micrometer, uh, the thickness less than 0.3 micrometer, and uh, sorry, nanometer. Um, and if there's an issue with this uh, uh, membrane, so due to various reasons, then the diffusions would be impaired. So then this simple diffusion is impaired. That means the amount of oxygen from the uh, alveolar side, it transfers of oxygen from alveolar side into the blood will be reduced. That is what they are called diffusion. So that's leading to reduction of oxygen in the blood. And the right to left shunt, as you know, the blood should go through the uh, lungs and the, or it, it should contact with the alveoli and catch oxygen from the alveoli and come into the uh, uh, left side of the heart to be distributed to the body. But if it is not happening and it is directly going to the uh, left side from the right side, bypassing the lung or the alveoli, so that is what we are called right to left shunt. So then obviously it uh, mix with the oxygenated blood then reduce the oxygen tension in the blood that is called shunt. And then uh, the final uh, thing is the VQ mismatch, ventilation, perfusion mismatch. So to get every oxygen molecule which is inhaled or we get in, into the uh, respiratory tract or the lungs or the alveoli, there should be very good blood supply. So the usually the normal mechanisms, this VQ, ventilation and perfusion ratio is maintained one to one. That means there is enough uh, uh, ventilation as well as the perfusion. If either one is reduced, it produces VQ mismatch and that leads to significant uh, reduction in the oxygen tension in the other side or the, uh, the pulmonary venular side. So that can happen uh, if there is uh, obstruction to these uh, respiratory uh, the, the airway can reduce uh, oxygen tension within the alveoli. That means simply it reduce ventilation but perfusion will be continued, nothing come out here. So there's nothing to uh, get oxygen. So then that can lead into hypoxemia or it can be complete collapse. Or other way, um, alveoli are perfusing, but there is no blood supply to carry this. Uh, so there is no blood supply around this uh, alveoli. Uh, the, the, uh, there's obstruction here in the capillary uh, we supply blood to this. So because of that, this reduction of blood supply. So this oxygen, the amount, uh, the air, which come into this alveoli get wasted. So this is also not a good thing, okay? So then both the ventilation and perfusion should be in a uh, ideal way. Or oh, one to one. So this is uh, here, the vent there is no ventilation. Perfusion is continuing. So this, this is the one extreme, VQ is zero. And this is another extreme. The ventilation is there, perfusion is zero. The VQ ratio is infinity. But the problem here is, here also there is nothing or no blood to come. That means simply the amount of oxygen came to this alveolar is wasted. So this is also not a good thing. So ideally there should be proper one-to-one -one ventilation and perfusion ratio. Okay, so this is just a brief recap what is happening in this uh, physiologically. 
okay so um yeah other thing is how do we identify this is uh, this is just to little advanced things uh, but just to recap alveolar and arterial gradient so this is alveolar side this is the uh, capillary side alveolar level usually the oxygen tension is 100 and the uh, when the oxygen the amount of blood the blood coming to the lungs that means deoxygenated blood oxygen tension is around 40 and when it's go through this it's get almost 100 uh, millimeter mercury of oxygen but usually it's 95 if there's significant difference so then then the alveolar oxygen tension is 100 and the uh, arterial side it's 95 so this is a gradient and this should be usually less than 10 if there is an issue with all these uh, things, I'll come to that. Okay. So if a patient is having hypoxemia, if their blood uh, oxygen level is low, blood gas, or uh, in um, saturation, so just check the alveolar arterial gradient. If that gradient is increased, that means there might be a VQ mismatch or diffusion issue or shunt. And if normal gradient, it's most of the time hyperventilation. But if you give oxygen, all these three hyperventilation vq mismatch and diffusion issues respond but if there is a shunt doesn't respond so the response is poor this is one of the reasons some of these patients with covid 19 even though a hypoxic might not respond into oxygen because they develop intrapulmonary shunting i will come to that okay so then what is happening in covid 19 so i just uh, went through what are the normal mechanisms which can lead into hypoxemia, the reduction of oxygen tension in the blood, and that is uh, uh, automatically leading to the reduction of uh, oxygen tension at tissue level. So this hypoxemia leading to uh, hypoxia. <coughs> Sorry. So in patients with COVID-19, they can have all these three mechanisms. High altitude is obviously out. So they can have ventilation perfusion mismatch. That is one most, that is the commonest problem. And they can develop right to left shunt as well as diffusion is also involved. And when they uh, they develop this some sort of uh, later disease, uh, if we don't uh, uh, ventilate them, then they can have involvement of the uh, the respiratory drive as well. That means uh, the ventilation also might be aff uh, in, uh, affected. But initial phase, those are the three. So they are, have ventilation perfusion mismatch, right to left shunt and diffusion limitations also can happen. So why this happened? So one thing is, as you know, that this is going on, they finally lead it to ARDS. Uh, they, they show some features of typical ARDS as well, but the COVID, the problem is, they show some atypical features of ARDS as well. So one of the most important thing is, there are some vascular thrombi. So this may be micro thrombi most of the time. Uh, especially within the alveolar capillaries. It, it can happen in other parts of the body as well. But if it is happening in the alveolar capillaries, so they cause redistribution of blood flow. So obviously when the one capillary is obstructed, then the blood is going through another capillaries. But the thing is, if that uh, capillary is associated with good, uh, very good ventilating alveolar, that uh, oxygen needs get wasted at the same time. So that like that, uh, so it lead into more VQ mismatch.